He's having a hard time with all this. This is the danger of false teachers. They tell people what they want to hear. They feed their sin. And then when people hear the truth, they ignore it because they think they're already saved. The problem for people is, God gave them a conscience. They know that what the Bible says is true, that the God of the Bible is real, and so are the consequences for sin. Oh, did I tell you? When I was in jail, I prayed and asked God to get me out, and he did it. God answered my prayers. He knows I believe in him now. That's why he let me go. So you asked him to turn you away from your sins and give you faith in Jesus? Well, I had faith to pray in him, and he let me go. I mean, if God answers your prayers, that means everything's okay, right? God is kind. He makes his son to rise on the evil and the good. But just because God shows his kindness to you, that doesn't mean you're saved. But I just can't get my mind around all the stuff in the Bible. It's so different from what I've been taught. People will believe anything but the truth. They just don't want to face the fact that they can't do what they want and get away with it. But I thought God gave everyone free will. He does. But people make the mistake of confusing free will with freedom from consequences. I have the free will to drive as fast as I want, but that doesn't protect me from the consequences if I got pulled over by a cop. <laughs> yeah, I guess that makes sense. But what about all the science? Here, look at this. Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because that which is known of God is revealed in them, for God revealed it to them. See, God makes himself known to people. But as we talked about before, they just don't want to confront the truth, so they'll do anything to suppress it. Now look, it goes on. For the invisible things of him since the creation of the world are clearly seen, being perceived through the things that are made, even his everlasting power and divinity, that they may be without excuse. There's no excuse for not knowing God because God put it inside of people to know him. We can see through his creation that he exists. Yeah, but we know how all this stuff got here. It wasn't created, it evolved. Yeah, God has something to say about that too. Look, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and traded the glory of the incorruptible God for the likeness of an image of corruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. See, people glorify nature. They give nature the credit, and they give themselves the credit for figuring it out. Anything but God. Now look. Therefore, God also gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to uncleanliness, that their bodies should be dishonored among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Look what happens when people remove God, when they believe their own lies, they wallow in their own lusts and sin. This is the reason they want to get rid of God. Just like we talked about. They just want to sin without being bothered by their conscience. Look at the consequences. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For their women changed the natural function into that which is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural function of the woman, burned in their lust toward one another. Men doing what is inappropriate with men, and receiving in themselves the due penalty of their error. Sounds familiar? Isn't this what's going on now? It's a punishment for rejecting God. Look at the rest. Even as they refused to have God in their knowledge, God gave them up to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not fitting. And then it goes on to list a bunch of wicked things people do. You'll find all those very familiar as well. At some point, if people keep rejecting God, he'll turn them over to their sins. He'll let them do things that are self-destructive, eternally self-destructive. Be worried when your conscience doesn't bother you anymore. But even with all these wicked things people do, God still offers us mercy. He offers to free people from these desires and change them. It's an incredible miracle. Can I look at that for a while? Please do. I have to get ready. I'm going back into town. Back? Why? I still have work to do. Noah! I just thought of something. Maybe God used things like the Big Bang and evolution to create everything. So tell me how our solar system and our planet was made, according to those things. Well, the sun was created when a bunch of gas and dust collected and got really dense, and then the sun kind of... turned on, and the nuclear reaction started. 
Okay. And how about the Earth? Well, the sun has gravity, and so all the dust and gas that didn't go into the sun started rotating around the sun. And as it was spinning, pieces would collide into other pieces, and this slowly built over time. The pieces got bigger and bigger, and that's how you get planets. And then, of course, after billions of years, stuff started to become alive and grow on the Earth. I mean, that's kind of simple explanation, but that's a general idea. Alright, Genesis chapter 1. Okay, got it. Now read the first five verses. What's going on? Hmm, okay, it's the first day, and God creates light. Keep reading, verses 6 through 8. What's happening there? Um, it sounds like God created the sky and separated the water on the earth from the water in the sky. Yep, that's right. Now how about verses 9 through 13? Um, God creates the land, and the grass, and plants, and trees. Right, very good. Now what happens the next day, verses 14 through 19? God creates two great lights, one for the daytime and one for the night. And the stars, too. Right. So what are those? What are the two lights? The sun and the moon, obviously. That's right. But do you remember what happened on the third day? Um, God created the land and the plants. Right. So the earth and the plants were all here before the sun and the moon were created. Up until the fourth day, God's light, the same light that illuminates heaven, was providing the light. So the theory of solar system and planet formation doesn't match. It's not just a matter of time, it's a matter of order. The scientific theory and the description in the Bible are in different orders. God couldn't have used the method you described. Tim, face it, you're just going to have to choose. Think about it. If the Bible is wrong in the very first chapter, why would you trust anything else it says? Why would you trust it to tell you about salvation? But the Bible can be trusted, Tim. You have to set aside your pride. You have to stop worrying about people thinking you're dumb or superstitious. Superstitious? Yeah, superstitious. That's what some people think of people who believe the Bible. Tim, this is really very simple. You've sinned. You know you've sinned. You know there are consequences for that. You just don't want to give up the sin because of your pride, and because the devil's got you convinced that your life won't be worth living without your sins. But it's a lie, Tim. It's just a lie to keep you in bondage and lead you to hell. You're not going to be able to have it both ways. Either you're going to believe God, or you're not. I have to go back into town. Take care of Alex, and think about what I said. You don't know how much time you have left. And remember, do not love the world, neither the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him.